I've got two recipes in store for you today, two very different recipes, both of which I enjoyed so much. So of course, I want to share these beautiful recipes with you. The first being this Kedgeri. Kedgeri is just that classic kind of comfort, just one pot, has everything, herbs, spices, fish, rice. If you've never had a Kedgeri before, this will be the recipe to try out this week for sure. The second dish that I'll be sharing with you is this creamy chicken pasta. This one is crushingly beautiful. I guarantee this will be a popular one in your kitchen. If you'd like to explore more of my recipes, if you need some more inspiration, then check out my eBooks, which are available over on my website at www.tishwonders.co.uk. This video is sponsored by Ritual. I have been taking the Ritual Symbiotic Plus for over a month now. So Ritual's three-in-one Symbiotic Plus helps support gut, digestive and immune health. Taking a probiotic has been an essential part of my supplement routine for years. I think most of us by now are familiar with the role that a probiotic and a prebiotic play, but I've recently discovered the role of something called a postbiotic, which is included in the Symbiotic Plus, which is why I am amazed by this supplement. A postbiotic provides fuel to the cells that make up the gut lining and supports barrier function. Such an important feature of the Symbiotic Plus is that each capsule is designed with delayed release technology to help reach your colon and not your stomach. I love the fact that Ritual are super transparent showing you every labeled ingredient plus their products are vegan friendly which I'm sure is great for a lot of you. Ritual are offering you 30% off your first month using the code TISH30. So yeah that's 30% off when you head over to ritual.com forward slash tish30 and you use the code tish30 at checkout. So we're gonna jump into this quick cook mackerel kedgeri. This is my cheap version of a kedgeri. Um, we're gonna use smoked mackerel so it's super easy, no need to cook the mackerel or anything. This makes a great family style one pot meal. You are going to love this one. This recipe calls for rice. I am using basmati rice in my personal opinion. I've used brown rice in the past but basmati white rice just works the best. So the cheat in this recipe, we're going to be using some smoked mackerel. Like I said, it's cooked, so no need to poach it or anything like that. We're just simply going to throw it in the pan once the rice is nearly cooked. We're also going to be needing some peas. Frozen peas work fine. That is what I am using. And um, they're just going to add like a little bite, a little flavor burst to the kedgeri. So for the spices, which in my opinion, just make a kedgeri, you cannot have a kedgeri without spices. It kind of defeats the whole point. We're going to be using Using some cinnamon. I'm using a cinnamon stick. Powder will work fine. But in saying that, we're also going to be using some garam masala, which has some cinnamon in it. So don't stress if you don't have cinnamon. Yeah, garam masala. We're going to be needing some curry powder and we're going to be needing some turmeric. Other ingredients for a classic kedgeri includes eggs and um, fresh herbs. So I'm going to be using some fresh coriander and some fresh parsley. So to prepare this super simple quick cook mackerel kedgeri, we're gonna start off by finely dicing up our onion. So straight into it, we're gonna grab a pan. You can use like a regular saucepan. I'm actually using kind of like a shallow pan for the rice, but yeah, you can use either. Both will work. So I drizzled in a little bit of olive oil and I also placed in a little bit of butter. This is just gonna to add to the kind of final touch final feel of the rice. Um, I threw in my onions, just kind of like sweating them for a couple of minutes. Kind of want to keep everything on like a low to medium heat. I then threw in my spices. So the garam masala, the curry powder and the turmeric. Again, make sure everything is low because we do not want to burn the spices. So the next step is to wash our rice. So you want to give your rice a really good wash. You want to wash it until the water runs clear so wash it rinse it repeat wash it rinse it repeat just do that step until the water runs clear and it is clean properly cleaned so yeah grab your washed rice and place it into the pan followed on by your vegetable stock you can use whatever vegetable stock you want if you don't have vegetable stock you can use water uh, I just think vegetable stock adds an extra oomph to it personally but you know work with what you've got place in your cinnamon stick bring everything to a slight boil and then reduce the heat place on the lid and leave your rice to cook for a good 15 minutes or so. So whilst the rice is cooking, we are going to flake the mackerel. So simply just peel the skin off 
and flake it. Super simple. After about 15 minutes, you can place in the green peas and you can place in the mackerel, the flaked mackerel too. Fluff everything up with a fork and cover the pan once again, just continuing to cook for about three to four minutes. So whilst the rice continues to cook, you can go ahead and hard boil your eggs. I hard boiled mine for about seven minutes, seven minutes and 15 seconds, something like that. And I roughly chopped up the fresh coriander and parsley. Go ahead and take that lid off that pan, take it off <laughs> and you will be met with just the most fragrant pot of rice. Honestly, honestly, honestly. I'm gonna top it with the fresh herbs. We're gonna give it a squeeze of lemon juice. We're gonna place on the egg and we're gonna give it some good black pepper to finish. You get so many different flavor hits when eating a kedgeri. It's packed with like wonderful spices. Kedgeri is just a complete meal for me. In particular, I adore this quick version. It kind of cuts out a few of the cooking steps and I have this beautiful one pot of rice and fish. Gorgeous. The next recipe is this creamy chicken pasta. I'm going to show you how to make a really delicious roasted red pepper creamy sauce from scratch. We're going to add roasted garlic. There's also an option to make this into a pasta bake, which I would advise. So yeah, you'll see the steps. This is mwah, delicious. So for this recipe, we're going to need some red peppers. Any type of red pepper that you have that you can find will work. We're also going to be needing some chili, garlic powder, onion powder, chili flakes, some paprika, some cayenne, some herbs. We are going to intensify this pasta sauce. It's going to be next level flavor. So I'm using double cream for this recipe. Of course, if dairy isn't your thing, if you don't eat it, if you don't use it, if you don't want to use it, you can use an alternative. Like I mentioned, there's an option to make this into a pasta bake in which case you will need some breadcrumbs and a little bit of parmesan cheese that's what i used um, you're going to need some pasta of course and we are going to be needing some chicken i'm using some chicken breast um, again if you don't eat chicken and you want to leave it out you could leave it out maybe add in a different type of protein totally up to you you work this recipe the way that you want to so grab your washed chicken place over some sea salt some black pepper some garlic powder onion powder paprika the cayenne we're going to add in some herb de provence and we're also going to add in some chili flakes with a drizzle of olive oil we're just going to give everything a good mix combine everything well make sure all of the pieces are covered you can place your chicken into a fridge whether you're leaving it overnight or for an hour so moving on to make Making our creamy roasted red pepper sauce pasta sauce we're going to chop up our red peppers just removing the seeds we are going to kind of largely chop our red onion no need to chop everything finely because you're going to see we're going to blitz it all so it's best to just slice the bottom of the garlic bulb just like this um, and then yeah, we're gonna roast it whole. Chop your chili in half, leave in the seeds, depending on how spicy your chili is. So I placed all of the ingredients, the red peppers, the chili, the red onion, the garlic, um, onto a flat lined baking tray. And I placed over some sea salt, some black pepper, and just drizzled everything with a little bit of olive oil. Placing the tray into a 190 degrees Celsius oven. I left the tray in the oven for about 40 to 45 minutes I wanted the garlic to just cook well I wanted it to get caramelized and just get delicious so yeah place your tray into the oven leave it in there until everything is cooked properly and then go ahead and remove your tray of red peppers and roasted garlic and onions and chili so place everything into a blender followed on by the double cream and we're simply just going to whiz everything up until smooth this pasta sauce already is absolute perfection but once we combine it with that chicken with all of that seasoning okay now we're talking so the next step is to cook the chicken down so we're going to grab a pan we're going to heat some butter or some oil in a pan on a low to medium heat we're going to throw in our chicken pieces our cubed chicken and we're just going to cook everything down for about five to six minutes five to seven minutes somewhere around that mark um, we do want to cook our chicken but we don't want to overcook it we definitely want it to be you know juicy and not overcooked because we've got a few other steps to go so place your cooked chicken aside and go ahead and cook up that pasta. You know how to cook pasta, right? So cook your pasta and in the same pan that you just cooked the chicken in, go ahead and place that roasted red pepper creamy pasta sauce in and just give everything a mix, heat it, 
heat it gently, drain the water from your pasta and go ahead and place in your pasta, your cooked pasta into that sauce, just combine everything. Like I said, this alone is incredible with the pasta sauce, but yeah, the chicken makes it. We're gonna place in our chicken pieces with some fresh parsley. You can season to taste if it needs more black pepper, if it needs a little bit more salt, like just adjust, give it a taste, see what works for you. The pan that I'm using is great because I can place it in the oven. So it means I don't have to like put it in a separate pasta dish. It's kind of easier this way. I placed on top the breadcrumbs, as well as grating over some Parmesan because it just works. I just wanted some Parmesan. I was just in the mood for some Parmesan. And I also placed over some dried herbs because I am extra. <laughs> and I drizzled over a little bit of olive oil just so everything would kind of crunch up in the oven. Placed the pasta dish into an oven of about 200 degrees Celsius. It only needed about 10 minutes of cooking because everything is cooked. It just needed to get crunchy on top. And I removed the pasta dish. I served it up. I really enjoyed this recipe. You know, when you really, really enjoy a meal, I really, really enjoyed this. So two very different recipes for you to maybe try out, maybe adapt, work them the way that you wanna work them. But as always, hopefully these recipes have just inspired you, given you that little, maybe that little push that you need just to step into your kitchen space and just create, just use these as a guideline for whatever you choose to create and cook and nourish yourself with. I will see you all very soon in my next cooking recipe video. Bye.